Doctor slash therapist of Reddit. Do you have any no? That's not normal stories? If so, what abnormal habit slash oddity did the patient have thinking it was normal? Guy in his 20s came in complaining of belly button problem. I examined him. He had an irritated scab inside the belly button caused by aggressive lint picking. But dude was sweaty and had a slight tremor. Looked like crap. When I asked how he was feeling overall he said oh okay I guess. Just a little tired. Drank a little more this week than usual. Probably overdid it. I had to pry for details and turns out he drank a gallon of gin over the last 3 days and stopped drinking alcohol when he started vomiting large amounts of blood and pooping a mixture of bright red blood and dark sticky stuff. Melina digested blood. He was totally unaware of the fact that he was going through alcohol withdrawal, sweating, shaking because he hadn't stopped drinking long enough in recent memory to experience symptoms. I sent him straight to the emergency room where they found a tear in his esophagus that required immediate intervention and he was admitted for inpatient alcohol detox. I read his hospital note. He still insisted that the ed doc examine his belly button. I love the note at the end. I don't care about my life. Just save my belly button. His belly button did. After all. Potentially save his life by being scabby. Woman came to the hospital because she was feeling tired and casually mentioned her persistent vaginal bleeding she'd been dealing with for two months. She said it wasn't ever a large amount, so she didn't think twice about it. Labs were done and her hemoglobin was 3. 9. For context. That's low. Like. You should be dying low. But she looked perfectly fine. 50 ish year old man who came in for chronic issue follow up. He brought his wife with him this time around. At the end of the visit. She says hey, tell the doc about that thing you can do. He turns to me proudly and tells me that he can whistle from his penis. If he really pushed, he could blow gas from it. His wife insisted it wasn't normal, but he was certain most guys could. Turns out, he had a connection between his bowel and his bladder. Mom brings her kid in because the babysitter was concerned about these spells the child would have. Apparently. The child would have episodes where he would just blankly stare at them and not acknowledge whatever it is they were telling him or whatever he was doing. The parents just thought he was being an asshole and not listening to them or being absent-minded. Kid turned out to be having absent seizures. A younger gal who had come in for generalized abdominal pain that she experienced on and off for years but just always wrote off to either menstrual cramps or bad food or life. We had asked her if her bowel movements were regular, and she said yes. At some point, someone was sharp enough to ask her how often she had bowel movements, to which she said about once every 2-3 two to three weeks. She had been suffering from pretty severe constipation, but just thought it was normal to have BMs once to twice a month. I'm sure I have more, but I think I wrote enough for now. Ninja Reddit, oh yeah, I have a lot of stories involving skin lesions. Please people, no doctor will ever fault you for wanting to just get something looked at. There are a few easy ways to tell if you're looking at something potentially evil. Gotta remend the above edit due to people's bad experiences. No decent doctor should blow you off if you're concerned about a skin lesion. They should at least take the time to discuss why it is they are not worried about a lesion. If it's not concerning. I was a patient. But when I went in for a routine physical the doctor poked my extended belly and asked how long it had been like that. I laughed and said, what? My beer belly? Oh. Since I was 21 probably. Turned out that. No. The beer belly was a cyst that had grown really large and that was why my friends kept saying I looked pregnant. I thought I just had really shitty friends. Had to have emergency surgery and for a week or so they did not know if it was a cyst or ovarian cancer. It was a pretty big scare. Believe it or not. This also happened to me. I found it because I became pregnant and they saw it in the ultrasound. Also had to have an emergency surgery and I lost 32 pounds that day. I always just thought I gained weight weird or something. 32 pounds. Holy fucking shit. The lady with type B COPD who had long term cigarette user symptoms. She spontaneously got COPD having never smoked in her entire life. How do you determine people aren't lying in situations like this? I know it's not terribly self-serving, 
but people lie about weird shit at the worst times for bad reasons. Cigarettes leave a lot of shit in your system and it's easy to tell if someone smokes. You know those blackened lungs they show you? Those are just one part of what cigarettes does to your body. Fuck. Your lungs actually go black? I just assumed that was hyperbolic and wildly exaggerated in order to get people to stop smoking. A pimple on her breast that was actually a 4 inch wide. Bleeding and necrotic breast tumor protruding through her skin. Oh that's sort of like me. I thought I had a pimple on my back. Until it shot out what I could only describe as moldy old cheese mixed with cream of chicken and blood. Wasn't necrotic as far as I know. Just an abscess. The smell is indescribable. I'm sure you as, I assume, a medical professional know what I mean. My pet got one of those, and I ended up draining it myself. It was not great. The pus was bright green. I feel like my story belongs here, even though I'm the patient, since the exact scenario happened to me. A few years back my mental health totally took a skydive. As a result I dropped out of school and had to start a recovery program. The first thing I had to do was talk to a psychologist. During these conversations with the psychologist, she'd focus on different parts of my life. So one day she'd ask about relationships and the next, childhood memories and so on. After a few conversations she focused on my social life. I then told her that it's pretty much non-existent. And it always has been. She then stated that I must have suffered from loneliness a lot then. I just told her that I've never actually felt lonely at any point in my life. After all it's pretty hard to feel lonely with the two voices in your head always keeping conversation. But surely she knew that. Right. Well as it turns out. No. Apparently everybody else only have their own voice in their head. My entire life has been a lie. Turns out I'm schizophrenic. Who tf knew a. Obligatory in the patient. I thought for years that I was just continually getting more and more out of shape. Despite my best efforts, nothing helped. I would just hit this wall and couldn't keep going. Eventually I couldn't walk from my driveway to my house without needing a break to breathe. Turns out shortness of breath isn't just something to wave away, it's also something I wish doctors had taken seriously. In the span of two weeks, I went from seeing a local clinic PA to being admitted to the IQ. My doctor told my husband he had no idea how I was still alive. Nevertheless functioning. This was me with my heart problems. I literally thought I was just lazy and out of shape, but never improved despite me trying to work out more. Turns out I had literally been in heart failure my entire life. It eventually quickly tanked to the point I needed a transplant. Now I feel like a freaking superhuman, because I can exercise without feeling like I'm dying. I don't need a transplant. But over a period of 8 months or so, I went from being fairly out of shape, but working on it and going to the gym several times a week, to being basically unable to stand up without feeling like I was going to pass out. My doctor was treating me for asthma for 6 months, until I got a chest x-ray and then an MRI and they found fluid on my lungs. I was diagnosed with dilated cardiomyopathy in early February, and I still... Can't believe how much better I feel now I'm on the right medications. Was on urology rotation in medical school when a 20 something year old male presented with the complaint that one of his nuts was too small and he wanted them to be equal because it was embarrassing. One testicle was normal, the too small one, while the other was the size of a grapefruit. Unfortunately the cancer had metastasized. Not sure how he did long term as I rotated off the service after he had surgery. A guy was in a chat that was primarily woman based and we diagnosed his testicle cancer. He wasn't that concerned and was going to talk to his doctor in a couple of months because he feels this lump and we told him no. He needs to go in tomorrow. He did need to get his ball removed and was thankful that we helped him. And I told him that if he had been willing to share his ID for recovery letters and gifts I would have sent some pens for him to write with. Uniballs. Of course. Of as a patient, I went in for a standard sleep study because I was always exhausted. Doctor asked me afterwards if I would consider signing a release for him to write a paper on me. Apparently I moved my legs over 9.000 in the course of the night. Apparently it was RLS. I wasn't realizing I had. My wife never even told me I did it and I had no idea. 
she casually agreed, after I told her what the doc said. I barely met the Rex for moderate sleep apnea, where they will recipe a machine. God I love that thing. I sleep so much better with it. Wiffy on the other hand, uses hers and sleeps with her mouth open. So annoying to listen to the air hiss out all night. What's her LS? Rowdy legs syndrome? Restless leg syndrome. Lol. Except when it's over 9000. Then it's rowdy leg syndrome. I had a root canal needed in a molar. I went in, so he could prep it for the next step. But 2 hours in, and he had to call it for the day. So by the 4th 2 hour visit, when it was finally done, I was sick of seeing my dentist. Almost a year later I'm back at the dentist. And he turns to his assistant, and says this is the one with that root canal. I'm a legend. Apparently. Not a doctor, but when I was maybe 14 or 13 I remember describing to my primary, how during my periods I would pass out from the pain. Couldn't move or I would get sick. And told her a story about how I went on a trip to Italy and some time in the middle of the flight became wildly sick to the point of terrifying the poor flight attendants. I'm so sorry flight attendants. Bye. Filling 4 puke bags. Crawling to the back of the plane clutching my stomach. Finding the doors locked attempting to use the first class bathrooms. So I could finish being sick. When denied entry just lay down in the aisle waiting for sweet sweet death to take me. It did not. Death has terrible customer service, and then passed out, when we exited the plane. But periods are supposed to be painful right? The doctor was like honey you're supposed to experience some discomfort not being capacitated anyway she put me on birth control, and I've never been happier. I'm more disturbed they wouldn't let a 13 year old girl clearly suffering from some kind of debilitating illness go into first class to use their restroom. That's absolutely cruel. Obligatory I'm not a doctor. Bullet. I have celiac disease, and am in the process of getting a Hashimoto's hypothyroidism diagnosis. I was the abnormal patient when I was a little kid. Because not only did I get monthly bladder infections, apparently I had to use a catheter for a while, but I don't remember that at all. My doctor was confused why I always had extreme gas, joint pain, and weekly headaches at the ripe old age of 6. Turns out it was just me slowly dying, because I ate a lot of wheat bread with celiac disease. Colon close bracket. Celiac is a nightmare. I was 17 when I was diagnosed. Symptoms can come on super fast too. I think I dropped something like 7 to 10 pounds, which on my frame was pretty significant and that's what got me into the doctor's office first. This happened to me. I woke up with a period so heavy the bed was soaked. Stood up and it just poured out of me. Clots the size of my palm. Overwhelmed I did what any woman would do, if they could, and phoned my mum to come over, and comfort me, and help me clean up the mess. At this point I was still thinking HMM. This is a strangely heavy period, and I was more worried about how my landlord would react to the carpet. I then fainted. Woke up. Fainted again. Phoned mum to cry about my stupid period making me miss work. My parents called an ambulance that arrived to the house first and rushed me to hospital. Not period. Massive internal hemorrhage in the womb. I had a guy that said every morning he would eat a handful of nickels. He said everybody in his family did it. I guess when people say change comes from within this is how it comes to be within. I like you. I'm a therapist and a couple came in and were fighting because they didn't want to have sex. I told them they didn't have to. They were fairly confused and thought I was lying to them. Now they have three kids. I was a patient. But mine was kind of backwards of the whole thing. I feel like it's close enough to fit. When I lie down on my back, my feet turn out lay completely flat. They've always done this. My bones in my legs are twisted and that's the most comfortable position for them. This was the day after I broke my pelvis and I was going to the doctors to see what the damage was. The doctor didn't know about my feet. So he had this terrified look on his face when he saw me and headed back out. My mom had to talk to him and tell him no. That was normal because he assumed I broke both hips. How else are your feet supposed to be? Being serious here. When I lie down on my back, my feet point more or less upward. Turning them too far outward feels uncomfortable. Like you're stretching the tendons along the inside of your legs. I was a patient when I was growing up. I had constant stomach aches. Every time I ate, 
I'd get sick. I went to the doctor multiple times for it, but they could never figure out what was wrong. Eventually, I started to think that everyone lives with pain like that, and I was just being a wimp and couldn't deal with it. I barely ate. Such that I was super underweight. I was miserable all the time. I was constantly stressed and depressed because of this problem. Fast forward to grad school. My first year is in China. I'm there for a few months and then, over time, my symptoms disappear. I don't have stomach aches anymore. I gain about 40 pounds seemingly overnight. Now I'm at a healthy, doctor approved weight. My depressive symptoms disappear almost entirely. But how could that happen? What could have caused such a change? Turns out, I'm lactose intolerant. I grew up in the Midwest where pretty much everything has dairy in it, and I'd been eating it constantly for so long. It took months for my system to reset. Being in China, where dairy isn't such a staple made all the difference. I felt like such an idiot when I realized that was what was making me ill. On the plus side, I feel better, look better, and I'm a much happier person now, tl. Doctor constant nausea and stomach aches are not normal. When I finally got on medication for my anxiety I found out getting irrationally angry and frustrated almost to the point of crying and screaming at people for touching things certain ways, putting the dishes away wrong, chewing, moving my stuff a few inches, or talking to me when I didn't feel like talking was, in fact, not normal. Thank god for Prozac. Same. Prozac is the best thing that has ever happened to me. It's the first medication that I've taken that has worked really well for me. When I started taking it and it really started to take effect at about week 5, I came in the bedroom in tears to tell my husband that I felt normal. Yes when my dose kicked in about week 4 fifths I felt drunk and was genuinely worried because one of the side effects is excessive happiness turned out that I'd forgotten what it was like to feel anything other than empty. Despair or anger. I kept telling my fiance I felt like I'd been gone for about a decade and just how grateful I was he'd stuck around. Prozac. Him and our dog are my favorite things 3. I had what I thought was a mild staph skin infection that just wouldn't go away. I ended up having to see an infectious diseases specialist and was on high dose antibiotics for 18 months. 2 pills 4 times a day. RIP your intestinal biome. Slash. Didn't realize until college when, having a discussion in a psychology class, that most people have a mind's eye and can see things visually in their mind. I have never had a daydream and thought I just didn't have an imagination. Turns out I have aphantasia. Wait this isn't normal? Nope. If you want to learn more there's a subreddit called r slash aphantasia. Not a doctor, but I had close calls. For a few years. I often found myself falling asleep at certain time, often after work. However, with family advice, I went to the doctors and explained the symptoms. I was checked by a specialized in autoimmune diseases. As that ran in the family, I was given an x-ray and blood work. They noticed my thyroid wasn't working. Given the second of two cancer scares, I was eventually diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroiditis and psoriasis. Thanks to unusual on my skin, I was put on hormones and steroids, likely for life. I was a patient, but I walked into an urgent care clinic after I had pushed my teeth through my bottom lip. I was covered in blood and had a large hole in my face. I told the nurse who did the intake I was having trouble drinking water and was worried about dehydration and did not acknowledge the new face hole. She got real freaked out. I know someone who did this after crashing his bike. A big blood clot fell out of his mouth onto the reception counter at the ear uh, after he asked how much he was bleeding. Happens to the best of us. I'm a patient. Growing up I assumed I was struggling in school because I was just a stupid miserable fuck up. I had zero confidence in myself or anyone else. Sometimes I would go days without sleeping. Other times I would sleep all day. I thought about my own death constantly. I truly believed that I was a flawed person and that it would always be that way. Turns out I actually have bipolar disorder. And thanks to medications and therapy, I'm a normal functioning human now. Mostly. Anyway lol. Same. But with inattentive ads. Until I was 19. I didn't know it was unusual for my feet to hurt every moment of every day. A lot. I have incredibly flat feet. 
they literally suction to the floor and make farting noises. I assumed that, like people told me, I was just incredibly lazy. Turns out, huh, most people didn't grow up in constant pain. Thanks, Ella's Danless Syndrome. I currently have a patient who, for no seemingly good reason, consumes food via their nose. It wasn't so bad when it was a softened diet, but the salad was a real shocker.